Hi guys, Losing Louie. I'm back with you for some unboxings. I got quite a few things in the mail today, and uh, one I had left over from uh, from before. Uh, I'm gonna take oopsie. I'm gonna take this big one and save that till last. That is not even a coin, but if you want to see what that is, um, hang around. So let's get started. I pre-scored these. Uh, this one is from. Huh, Looks like an eBay purchase, so let's see what that is. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. What in the heck? What is this? Can you see it? I have no idea what this is. Let's keep my information out of it. Oh, my gosh. This is a Wedgetail Eagle. Okay, I uh, just wrapped really, really nicely in a, a satchel of some kind. That's kind of sweet. I like that. So this is uh, not the 2016. I do have those coming. This is um, the 2015. You know, I had never bought a 2015 Wedgetail Eagle um, in, uh, in, in MS-70. Uh, I did buy uh, a few tubes of the uh, of the uh, BUs because I got a great deal on those. But um, I had not bought the um, the graded ones until I heard recently that 2016 was coming out with a new image. You probably caught that on Mr. Vegeta's channel. But uh, uh, Mercanti has changed up the Wedgetail Eagle image, and uh, I do have the 2014s in MS70. And I thought this would be a great time to pick up uh, the 2015 uh, with discounts. And oh, I think I got this for like 80 bucks. So uh, they retail for 100. And uh, if you do want to put together a date set of the graded MS 70s, um, you're going to want the 2015s. I bought that the same day I found out that the 2016s were uh, going to be more interesting um, in that the image was changing. In my mind, that's a good thing. Uh, I do like changing images. I think that makes the coin more collectible and more valuable. And I'm thrilled at this point that I held on to my 2014s because that is the first year of the set. Okay, uh, number two uh, from Oklahoma City. What is that, uh, Atmix or Provident? I get the two mixed up. Come on out of there. Gonna cut this really quickly. There have been some fantastic deals um, right around Christmas time is when uh, all the good deals started popping up. So I have been buying. Oh my gosh, that is okay. I did an alert on these, and I will not. Uh, this is Atmex. I will not linger on this for too long because. Now I've uh, shown it once and talked about it twice, but uh, the alert, uh, you may recall, was for the Bison Bullion 7-ounce pistol, and here it is. Um, Apmex uh, seemed to have a bunch of these. I think they were overstocked. Anyway, uh, this was about $150, um, which was uh, about $50 below the retail, and uh, probably about $30 below where they're pricing them right now. So I decided to get another one. I love these. I would have a whole trunk full of these. I'm not positive it's the best investment, but I do think it's um, it's going to hold its value. Okay, they're really cool. So there it is. If you want to see that up close and personal, uh, search out my prior video, um, the Bison Bullion um, pistol. Okay, so happy to get that from Appmex. That was a great deal from them. And uh, I wanted to get one of these 30 gram pandas in the um, Apmex Direct, Mint Direct package. They were a couple dollars more than the basic BU. And not that I believe in buying these this way. Uh, it does ensure authenticity, or it does in, certainly uh, increase the odds of authenticity. And I really wanted to see it. Um, so uh, let's see what this coin looks like. Gosh, I'm missing my rag. Ah, here we go. See what this coin looks like. Let's see what kind of coins they're putting in the uh, the Mint Direct. Uh, so the front, 
back front looks pretty solid there. And the back, very smudgy. Very smudgy. Okay, so I'm not going to linger on this coin, but this uh, is an inferior uh, coin in this Apmex Direct, Mint Direct package. Um, yeah, it's all smudged up. That's inside the capsule. Looks awful. And it's in there crooked to boot. Okay, so boo on the Mint Direct. That I wish I hadn't bought. Let's check out what it looks like in the capsule. This is the BU. They were about 20, 20 to $21 at the time. I don't know what they are right now. Um, there is the Panda. I got one of these from Gold Silver Bowl as well, which was perfect. Uh, this one, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I see a ding on the rim. Oh, no, I don't. That's the capsule. Let's look at the back. Oh, also very smudgy. Oh, this capsule is scratched. So little little teeny scratches on the capsule for the panda, even though it was in an app mix thing. Okay, both those are boo. I mean, they were only 20 bucks, but uh, boo, not perfect, which I don't expect for bullion coins, but those pandas are one of the most perfect bullion coins that are struck. And I certainly do hope for it, and if I don't get it, I'm disappointed. All right, uh, unpackaging number three, I guess this is. This is courtesy of Silvertown, which happens to be where I picked up the Star Wars uh, The Force Awakens Ray coin. These are about $80. You can still find them. I think the mintage is 10,000, and I'm not going to do a whole lot of hoopla about this Star Wars coin, but it does it does um, go with the set that I have now. I've got every one of them in the recent and the uh, the historical release. So let's take a look at Ray and see what she looks like. By the way, saw the movie, fantastic. The Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens, definitely go see it. Um, there is Ray. She's uh, the new, like the new protagonist. Um, and here she is. Oh, that's, that's a nice coin. Okay. Would you like to see the back of that one? It's weird. Her face has um, kind of odd shadows on it. I guess she's working hard scavenging there. Um, so here is, this one's in here crooked, but that's nobody's fault. They do jiggle around. Um, here is the queen side. Not a perfect coin either. I don't think that would grade a 70. There's some little scratches under the queen's hair. But uh, I do like the coin. And I love the movie. So uh, I've heard some people saying the movie was no good. Boo, man, our audience clapped out loud after the end of the thing. So if you're an old timer like me, definitely go go check out The Force Awakens. But uh, standing room only for tickets and stuff. We had to buy our tickets the, uh, the day before and had to sit in the front row as it was because um, we went and got popcorn. And by the time we were back, all the seats were full. Crazy stuff. Okay, yay Star Wars. So let's put that aside. Here we go. Let's keep going. Am I still rolling here? Oh my God. Is that nine minutes? Sorry guys. Feel free to move along if I'm boring you. This is from Talisman. What did I buy from? Oh, okay. So Lady Liberty will like these. I know she's got a few sets of these. This is the three coin year of the monkey, but um, the price on these was unbeatable. And uh, what I did was all the discounts that I have been amassing, the uh, the ten percent offs coupled with the four times eBay bucks, coupled with some special weird deal that PayPal was like giving me an extra ten percent off for no particular reason on all purchases one day, and it happened to be the same day that I was using my um, my Target cards and my other cards and my eBay four times and then had an additional discount. Anyway, um, 
This looks like two sets. Hmm. Okay, a decent number on that. So this is the three coin year of the monkey, and uh, my uh, this is Talisman through eBay. Okay, if you guys aren't shopping on eBay and using these discounts, you're paying too much. Just let me straighten these out for you real quick. I'm sorry you can't see this. Well, oh, I love that two ounce monkey. Okay, I was not going to buy these, but at $160, $170, you know, after discounts and extra, extra coupon awards and stuff, I just couldn't resist. So that is um, pure profit right there. And that uh, looks like a keeper. I think the monkey's going to do well. So that's my three coin set. I have the goats as well, uh, which have uh, been fairly disappointing in their returns because they announced that nonsense about the new two ounce, uh, the release of the, the individual two ounce coins. But um, anyway, at that price, at that price, I am not going to complain. That was a good use of my discounts, I think. Okay, moving on. Uh, this is uh, looks like an eBay purchase. Oh, <laughs> this is a, a greeting card. Actually, the next two things I'm going to show you are um, greeting cards and comics. A greeting card and a comic, so feel free to pass if you don't like those things. If you want to hang around and check out something that's non-coin related, hang around. This is other stuff that I collect. Okay. This person um, had a, a direct line into the the vault. Um, had uh, coin. Had um, cards um, directly from the vault at American Greetings. Um, this is a, a retired design from the Zonk line. Uh, Zonk is an American Greetings uh, card from the 1960s, uh, made famous by uh, cartoonist uh, Robert Crumb. And uh, this one came right from their vaults. Uh, I did not know this existed, but this is a Don Martin Zonk card. I collect all of the Crumb um, Zonks, and I have them all. But um, this is undiscovered by me. Uh, maybe we aren't much, but we're all we've got. That's Don Martin. Okay, for those of you that collect um, cartoons and, uh, and uh, 60s paraphernalia, you'll know who that is. So that's my new Zonk card. Excited to get that. Paid 10 bucks for that, which is kind of a lot for an old greeting card. Um, and here is another treasure that I picked up recently. Uh, this one is uh, acknowledged by many in the underground comics world as one of the first underground comic books um, with Robert Crumb being the star back in the 60s in San Francisco, pushing around his uh, homemade comic books um, in a baby carriage trying to sell them for a quarter a piece. Um, the, some of his comics uh, sell for as much as $5,000 now. This one here is not that rare, but I have seen it go for $1,000 in pristine condition. And you may recall these if you were an inquisitive young kid like I was. I was always interested in underground newspapers. Uh, it was in the uh, hippie uh, Vietnam era and uh, this stuff was totally illicit, okay? You could only find it um, in the head shops and places of that nature of ill repute, ill repute. But um, this is, I'm sorry, this is taking so long. If you wanna hang around, please do. Uh, this is Jive Comics number one. Okay, these were printed on newspaper stock and they were considered to be throwaways. You weren't supposed to keep them. And most have been folded and thrown away and had fish wrapped in them. But there are a couple of examples. And like I say, I've seen them sell at Heritage for $1,000. And this one is not bad. I don't recall the price, but it, it was somewhere in the $75 zone. Um, and that was after all my discounts. I did apply discounts to this purchase as well. So here it is, Gothic Blimpworks, Jive Comics, Robert Crumb, number one in fine condition. 
This is Mr. Goodbar, one of his earlier designs. It is an adult-only comic book. There's the back, our friend. That's not Jimi Hendrix. This is actually um, uh, Luther Johnson with Muddy Waters Blues Band. This is Luther. Okay, looks a little like Hendrix, though. And on the inside, oh, man. I don't know if I want to pull this out. Let's see. You know, Robert Crumb is uh, keep on trucking and uh, some really, really crazy stuff from the 60s. Psychedelic, and he was on LSD when he drew most of this stuff. But he is one of the, uh, the premier underground comics uh, cartoonists, illustrators. And this was his number one deal prior to Zap Comics. Let's see if we can get a non-X-rated... <laughs> S. Clay Wilson is uh, another one of the artists in this. I have one of his uh, original oil paintings on the wall. Um, just looking for something that I can show you guys. Oh, and Vaughn Bode, Bode is actually um, Cheech Wizard and uh, the Machines. So I'm going to show you a, a Vaughn Bode piece. Let me just... Uh, this is one of his deals. This is the guy that actually thought up the concept of the Terminator. Okay? He thought it up and drew it long before Schwarzenegger played in it. Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh, man, this is in great shape. This is in great shape. Uh, Larry Todd was also in these. <laughs> Here we go. This is a crumb. This is a color crumb. Uh, don't goof on it. Look at that artwork. Huh? That's crazy. I'm going to show you the top one. I'm not going to show you the bottom strip here. <laughs> okay. Well, I wish I could show you guys this stuff, but uh, some of you aren't old enough to see it. So uh, there you go. That's Robert Crumb, Gothic Blimpworks number one. That's the end of my presentation. And uh, you guys have a wonderful day. Losing Louie signing out. I can't believe I went 17 minutes. Please forgive me.